So you'll see straight away on here, we have two sides. We have results that we don't want side, results that we do want size, and we have if in the middle. So let's look at what the if means, understand that. Then we'll look at the psychology uh, and how it plays out in our life day to day, okay? So the if is if we have these two things, we stand more chance of achieving that side, the results that we want. If we don't have these two things, then we get more of what we don't want. So what are the two things? Well, firstly, the, the I stands for inspiration. You know, when we're inspired, what are other words around that? Passionate, excited, motivated, energized, you know, to be inspired, to be in spirit is absolutely crucial when it comes to setting and achieving goals. On the other side, the F stands for faith. Now, I know faith has a lot of religious connotations, and of course it is included in that, but it's actually bigger than that. You know, faith is, if we keep it in very simple language, is to have a positive expectation. Faith is what keeps us going on our journey, no matter what results that we get. Because often, when we set a goal, especially if it's taken us outside of our comfort zone, which it should, because then it's a real goal, we, you know, we're going to hit obstacles, we're going to hit difficulties, we're going to hit the unexpected, and it's faith that keeps us going. And when you look at... In most of the, the, the famous stories out there of people that have achieved greatness, then they, they had these two things in abundance. So let's look at Edison. You know, the Edison, I know this changes depending on what book you read, but he supposedly failed a thousand times to invent the electric light bulb. But what kept him going? Inspiration and faith. All right, J.K. Rowling, who, you know, we know the story of J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter, but, you know, she was rejected 12 times before the book was accepted. I have a few publishers must be really kicking themselves, but 12 times. So, but what kept her going? Inspiration and faith. Um, there's plenty of these, but what about Henry Ford? Henry Ford went bankrupt five times before he actually made it. Five times, we're broke. But what kept him going? Inspiration and faith. Now, that's what enables us to get these results. But let's look at the other end of the spectrum of these and then we'll make more sense of this. So what's the other end of inspiration? Apathy, okay? So apathy, and all the motions that we have around apathy, you know, demotivated, uninspired, can't get ourselves moving, so that's apathy. What's at the other end of the spectrum when it comes to faith? Well, that's fear, okay? Fear is at the other end of faith. And fear, to keep it simple, is a negative expectation. So we have a positive expectation, faith, and a negative expectation, fear. Okay. Now, depending on where we are, so if we, for instance, it's possible that we've got faith, but we're not inspired. It's possible that we have inspiration, but we don't have faith. So one out of two doesn't cut it. We need to have both. And, and if this was a scale of one to 10, then, you know, the closer we move up to a 10, the closer we move up to a 10, the more chance we've got of achieving. So in between where you are now and where you want to get to, you can look at it this to this to, There's only two emotions that are going to block you. That's apathy and fear. That's it. And fear-based emotions, doubt <clears throat> would be another one. So they're, they're, that's it. They're the only two emotions. And when we can overcome those, and find ways to overcome those, which the, with these videos that are going to come out, I'm going to actually show you how to do that, then we stand more chance. We stack the odds in our favor. Now, let's look at this psychologically, okay? So, so there's my iceberg. And the iceberg is often used to explain the way the mind works because we talk about one mind, but that one mind has two parts to play, okay? So it has the conscious, and the subconscious, okay? Now, with the iceberg, we know that when you're seeing the top out over the, you know, uh, 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 above the waterline, it's only a fraction of the total size of the iceberg. And it's the same with our mind. You know, the conscious mind is only a fraction in terms of its size, its capability, its power, compared to the subconscious powerhouse that sits below it. Now, without if that's just sitting in the sea there, that at the moment is directionless. It's going to be taken by the current. 
Okay, so the current is going to just take where take it where uh, where it wants to go, and it's and the iceberg is going. So the first thing we need is we need direction. The iceberg needs some direction, so we need some goals. Okay. Um, we need direction, and that's what goals do. They provide direction in our life. They give us something to move towards. That lovely saying, a man going nowhere usually gets there. Now, in my time that I've been coaching people, I call these the four gets, because there's only really four gets that people want, right? Get thin, get rich, get love, or get a life. That's it, right? Everything can be boiled down more or less into one of those four gets. So um, I call these health, wealth, love, and lifestyle. Health, wealth, love, and lifestyle, okay? And when you think about some of the goals that you've got in your life right now, or where maybe you're at these end of the spectrum, is it to do with health? Is it to do with wealth? Is it to do love? And is it to do with lifestyle? Health is about mind, body, spirit. It's about well-being. Wealth is about the, the career that you've chosen, the job that you do, the way that you earn an income. Love, obviously, is about intimate relationship, friends and family. And lifestyle is the fun. It's it's the sort of lifestyle that we create. It's how we spend our time and money fundamentally. So here we have now the, the mind and we have some goals. So let's say that we set a goal for ourselves, okay? So the conscious mind begins to row towards a goal that we've set for ourselves, okay? Now the conscious mind is the rational, is the logical part of the brain. It's also the processor, it's processing all of the information coming in through our five senses, what we see, what we hear, what we touch, taste, and smell. It's processing all of that, and then it's dropping it down into the subconscious mind. Now, the subconscious mind, let me, the subconscious mind down here, the subconscious mind is more to do with emotions. So we make decisions up here rationally, but we make decisions down here in the subconscious emotionally. So you could say that consciousness, con the conscious mind equals rational, subconscious mind equals emotional. So let's put an emotional scale in there. So we've got at one end of the spectrum, painful emotions, emotions that we like to avoid. At the other end of the spectrum, we have pleasurable emotions, emotions that we like to experience, right? Now, the thing is that when we set a goal, logically we go rationally, we go, it makes sense. I'm not enjoying this over here. This isn't what I want. Maybe I'm, you know, I'm carrying more weight than I should be carrying. I'm not as fit, or I'm not earning the income that I want to be earning, or I've got no time to be with the family. I want time to be with the family, or my relationship isn't as close as I would like it to be uh, um, with my significant other, all right? So we, we oh, not, don't like that. So we start to row the boat over this way. We start moving in this direction. We want to move into this direction towards the goal that we want to achieve, okay? But what happens down here is this little, this, the subconscious mind is constantly asking the question, well, what does this mean? So when we take action, it says, what does this mean? Now let's say that the action is to get fit, okay? So health, to get fit, and you set your alarm at um, six in the morning, you've got everything ready to get up out of bed, the alarm goes off, right? Logically, we know it makes sense to get out of bed. Logically, we know the actions we need to take in order to get ourselves back into shape. But as soon as that alarm goes off, subconscious mind says, what does this mean, pain or pleasure? Now, what does it mean for most people getting out of bed at six in the morning, especially if it's not nice outside, it's raining, okay? Pain. So what do we do? We hit the snooze button. And this is what we call mind over mattress. And usually the mattress wins because we make decisions emotionally and then we back them up with logic and reason. So if this isn't on side, and let me draw in a, a little engine down here, okay, little outboard engine. If this is moving in this direction and this is a paddle and this is an engine, well, it makes sense which one's going to win. And that's why logic always fails. Willpower only works short term, long term, never works. So what we've got here is we've got misalignment. We've got a conscious intention misaligned with a subconscious program. And as long as we've got misalignment like this, there's no chance of us ever achieving our goals. It isn't until we get conscious alignment with our subconscious minds that really we become powerful and can achieve the goals that we want. Now, over the next few videos, I'm going to show you how to get alignment, how to reprogram the subconscious mind so it's working for you rather than against you. 
as a sort of a final with this video, let me give you something to take away because we're going to deal with fear in future videos, but let's look at something now in terms of apathy, right? When we just, like getting out of bed in the morning, it's not a fear thing. Getting out of bed and going, it's not anything to do with fear. It's everything to do with this, that I'm just not inspired enough. Now, when it comes to setting goals, there's an important distinction. It's never the goal that we actually want. Think about it. I want to make more money. What, you want pieces of paper with a queen's head on it, okay? No. No, because we don't want that. The goals that we set are not actually what we want. What we want is what they're going to do for us or get for us emotionally. Okay, that's what they're going to do for us. So um, I was speaking to this one individual that had gone out and bought himself a brand new sports car. It's a Porsche, right? And he was so excited about it. And you know, when I said, what is it like to drive? He said, oh, it's incredible when the roof's down and the, you know, the wind and you can feel the sun and you put your foot down, the whole car vibrates and you feel that power. You can hear the air being sucked into the engine. And he went and he lit up in front of me. And that's what creates the inspiration. So it's the why under the goal that really we need to connect with. And as soon as we start connecting with the why, the bigger why, they say 80% why to, 20% how to. Right? When you've got a big enough why to, you find a way to achieve your goals because we begin to really influence the subconscious mind down here because this side gets massively amped up. Now I'm talking about this, not this, okay? Because if fear's in the way, fear can still override um, inspiration. Now, you can be inspired to do something and fear comes in. Fear of rejection, fear of failure, and it will grind you to a halt. So we've got to look at how to deal with that. Um, so the way that we do this is we raise our, what I call our Y flag, okay? Our Y flag. And what that does, metaphorically, what it does is it creates a compelling goal. It's like a magnetic goal that pulls us, less paddling, more being pulled towards the goal that we want. So we start to achieve things more effortlessly and more easily, and that'll make more sense with the other videos that are coming your way. So there we go. We've looked at the two saboteurs, the two emotions fundamentally that in between where you are now, where you want to be. That is apathy and apathy type emotions and fear and fear-based emotions. Um, we've looked at logic fails. If we're just trying to paddle this is always going to win because emotion is far more powerful than logic. We've got to be, have total alignment with the conscious and subconscious mind. And the quickest way to get leverage on yourself when it comes to your goals is to connect with the why. Why do you want that goal? What's the reason? What will it do for you? What will it get for you? When you start to connect with that why, you start to become far more purposeful.